on uh, processing. And in the previous slide, we used that uh, what are the primary processing uh, techniques which is used for uh, making composites. And uh, we have seen that there are two types of techniques that is only certification processing and another one is solid state processing. And certification processing, you have different techniques just like semi solid, liquid <coughs> metal processing, spray casting, infiltration, and so on. <coughs> and then we have solid state process, which is uh, water metallurgy, diffusion potting, and percussion techniques. <coughs> so, here uh, maybe some two, three processes I will elaborate in detail. So, first one is the liquid metal casting. So, for this uh, process, we have to have a Electric resisting uh, furnace and same setup is there in the uh, mechanical department itself with the Dr. Uh, and uh, what you have to have, you have to have an electric resistant furnace, then you have to have a crucible and a, and a mechanical impeller. So, in which we can uh, strip the, we have to melt the metal inside the uh, furnace. Maybe the, we have to keep, keep a crucible, I think uh, the industry students may visit that lab and you can contact with the Dr. Sunil. Uh, and so you can maybe show that there are value specialties. What we does is that we take the solid metal, melt it, insert it, and we stir it, mechanically stir it, then add the particles and make it. Treatment of reinforcement, then when the metal alloy elements are added, then the particles are homogenized by stirring it, and then later it gets cast through the components. Or billets or special casting or prototype castings. And these billets are the plates which is made as it can be rolled, extruded, poured, or can be remelted, and it can be further processed. So it has a lot of advantages and disadvantages. So one thing is it can be easily adapted because you can see any foundries. <coughs> Only thing is that you have to have a furnace, you have to have a <coughs> stirring setup, you have an expertise and act in doing it is easy to disperse. Easy adaptability with converts or melting and casting process. Direct common casting make can be made. That means you can melt the metal, add the particles, and directly yeah, make the mold and you can make the components. And it, this is a batch process because it cannot be a continuous uh, process. So, and batches of six to seven times, depending on the furnace capacity, we can do it. And there are even a lot of limitations also. So, one of the limitations is uh, controlling the dispersion of the reinforcement because. Unless it is not properly dispersed, it will become agglomerates. <coughs> because the, the each particle has to be wet with the aluminium 100%. And if any surface of the metal is not, or the reinforcement is not melting, then it will form a cavity and that will come, the, yeah, the particle will come to the top and it will get agglomerated. So it has to be wetted properly and through which there are a lot of wetting properties, uh, uniform uh, stirring speed, particle action has to be controlled, and a lot of process parameters. So there is where the difficulty lies actually. The setup is very easy. You have to have a furnace mechanical, but the controlling process parameters is the difficulty. Then another thing is the casting defects. One of the major casting defects is you pour any metal into the dye, the shrinkage porosity and the gas porosity which normally comes. Any casting you do, polymer or anything. So this has to be controlled. So you have to do the degassing treatments, say a compost can. Just like a pure alloy, almost it cannot be degassed because normally they use hexachloroethane. If you add hexachloroethane, this chlorine will come around the particle and the particle will come. Only is the way is that nitrogen degassing can be done. And the other thing is that interfacial reaction is another problem. Interfacial reaction means the particle which is added must not react too much with the liquid metal and it must start forming a deleterious uh, interfacial product because many of the interfacial products is like aluminum carbon. Aluminium, suppose you add silicon carbide into aluminium, it normally forms aluminium carbide, and this aluminium carbide is hygroscopic in nature. That means uh, once you expose to air, it converts to alumina and methane, and this methane will, methane will go and there will be a lot of cavity will be formed. So that will lead to the corrosion and cut off problems are there. So aluminium carbide formation has to be cut off. So a proper temperature control has to be there. The reinforcement has to be surfaced in the Size is also limited, it's a very fine nano size means <coughs> it's very difficult to add with the surcasting techniques. So normally they go for semi-solid roots. And density difference between the matrix and reinforcement should be narrow. <coughs> so your liquid metal is 2.6, and if you add a density of tungsten carbon or something in the reinforcement, which is having 10 gram per immediately it will settle to the bottom. So 
particle must have support distance 2.6, then the density can be something from 2 to 3.5. Above that, definitely it will lead to the center, even the largest body size. So, a lot of <coughs> limitations are there, but we have to overcome these limitations by the controlling the process parameters. So, these are some of the components.